G'day there, I'm Richard Musgrave Evans and today it's dawn. First light, the sun hasn't risen yet. We've got a fair bit of cloud around but I'm hoping the sun is going to spear through and give us a nice effect. Now, palette knife again, oil paints, Belgian linen, clear primed Belgian linen. Alright, now I haven't got much time so I'm just going to get stuck into it. Right, biggest differences, I've got nothing on the board. Just got a little bit of white on the knife. I'm just drawing out a bit of a mountain range in the distance. Done that. Straight into the biggest differences. I want to get the colour in of all that foreground. So I've mixed up a cat orange, burnt sienna and magenta type of mix. Using a fairly big knife, as you can see. Okay, now, I've already got some colours on the board from yesterday's painting which is good. I haven't cleaned the palette off and what that is allowing me to do is get, get some pre-mixed colours which is pretty cool. Just have to do a few touch-ups with our colour, like I'm putting a bit of burnt sienna in and a bit of viridian green and whatever. But... Having the paint there from the night before has actually uh, helped big time, which is great. Okay, that mountain range, a little bit of that blue and a bit of that pinky magenta that's already there. Obviously, I'm just putting in a dull tone at the moment because it's quite the landscape's quite keyed down at the moment. Bit of blue. Viridian green and magenta. What have we got there? Pale sort of washed out colour. Now I have noticed that when this first light does normally come up, the shadows on the mountains are very pale and quite often a pale blue green. They can be very deceptive. Sometimes you think they're a bit magenta looking, sometimes you think they're blue, and they actually vary of course, but On the whole, there's definitely a pale green aspect about the shadows. Now just pull the palette knife up this way. Right, now let's get that sky in. She's quite keyed down at the moment. What's happening with the sunset? The sun is actually rising over there. It's beautiful colours. And, uh, but I'm hopefully going to capture the light coming across the mountain ranges. Now at the moment, there's almost no colour in the sky. It's very similar to what you're looking at. Over there, there's colour everywhere. But that's not what I'm painting. <laughs> right. Okay. Go a bit of blue, we've got some older white here, which is a little bit mixed with other colours. I'm going to use that white with the blue rather than using my fresh white. I'll save my fresh white for when I'm using really clean colours, like the um, warm and cool contrast when the sun is actually out. What have we got here? Just going to bunk some of this in. This is mainly blue and white. Got a little bit of magenta and other stuff. Right, <clears throat> excuse me. A bit crackly this morning. Bit of a crackly start. Got up about, oh, I don't know, two hours before sunrise. A couple of cups of tea to wake up and all that sort of stuff. Just drop this in the bin. Okay, now I'm going to try and anticipate what's going to happen because at the moment, nothing much is happening there yet, but the sun's not going to rise for a little bit. But if I leave it too long, I'll be out of time, so. What have we got? Let's have a look. 
just looking for hints of colour in the sky as to what I will be using. Just clean this area while I'm thinking about that. It's not going to hurt to put a bit of magenta, there's always a bit of that around in morning light. And like I said before, we can alter it as we go, we'll put in what we're anticipating. We'll alter as the day actually kicks on. Yeah, actually I'm starting to see a little bit of in the sky now, so I'm going to put it in. I was expecting that that would be the case. It was just a bit hard to see because it's a bit overcast. Mix that a bit better. As you can see, the magenta is starting to appear. Now what I reckon I'll do is I'll get a nice mix of burnt sienna and white. Mix up a nice brew. I like to use burnt sienna in skies, whether it be uh, midday skies or, or, or particularly evening and morning skies. This burnt sienna white mix is a fantastic mix. And it will kick in soon, so I'll just put a bit here. I love working on big paintings, but quite often it's quite relaxing and nice to work on a small piece where you can get, you're not so pressed for time. And believe me, when you're working on a fleeting moment like so, let me just, when you're working with a fleeting moment, time is of the essence. Got to keep all these areas clean. Now I'm going for a bit of yellow ochre and white over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right now, yes, <clears throat> sorry, croaky. Yesterday, I've already got a little bit of a pale green that I made up with uh, yellow ochre and cobalt blue and it's sitting there and it's not going to be too far off what we want so put some in eh okay yeah I'll go to a stronger blue at the top Okay, already you can see there's a bit of a effect of light starting to kick in. Put this in the bin. <clears throat> okay, now. Just going to make a couple of trees. So I'm just mixing up some yellow ochre, burnt sienna. Bit of Viridian green maybe. Just getting the horizon line kind of how I want it, so it's balanced. Stand back and have a look. Now, that tape's just as a guide. I'll put this in the bin. That tape's a guide, and now I'm already going to take it off. It'll give me more of an idea of the colours I want to mix if I get rid of it. I like the tape on these little paintings, but it can also, because it's not the colour of the linen, it can deceive your eyes a little bit as to what you're painting. So get it off earlier and you've got more chance of painting the colours that you want. What 
we got here. Okay, clear the area again. Right, some nice colours appearing in the sky itself. It's going to go pure white. That's not clean. Now, what do we got here? That is. Let's just see if it's the colour I want. Ooh. I'm just seeing a little bit of alizarin crimson, that's what this colour is here in the sky, but I've mixed it with a little bit of magenta. Yes, let's have a look. Alizarin crimson. A bit more white in the mix. Perhaps we're going to take that cloud out of the painting, I feel like. Half mix some of that in. Keep the knife clean. Do a bit of blending while we're waiting for the sun. The, uh, the knife's really good for softening things by smearing. Okay. Bit of that magenta. Bit of that orange. Okay, now I'm going to have to get some more orange, as usual. I've Bit of tag sting, stingy on it. What do we got here? Ooh. What a lovely morning. What a lovely morning. Okay. Bit of orange. Bit of magenta. Knock it back a tiny bit with uh, what have we got? a little bit of blue in it just to knock it back. The intensity of the chromatic saturation has been knocked back with a little bit of blue. Just adding a bit of our fun. Adding a bit of fun and balance while I'm waiting for that uh, waiting for that sun to get up a bit so I can see what I'm doing. Just, just hoping that cloud bank is not going to be too much of a problem because What's going to happen, pretty much now, the sun is just about to rise. I can tell by the colours in the sky, and the sun's over there, but the problem is, there's a bank of cloud. Now, if that bank of cloud gets in my way, I'm not going to get any beautiful light across these ranges that I'm waiting for. So, it's just a game of wait and see, that's what plain air can be all about. You never quite know what you're going to get. Bit like life a box of chocolates I guess. We're getting those beautiful blues out there and magenta is exactly what I've put here. If I anticipated correct, this blue along here ranging into magenta is exactly what's going on just out there. Getting a bit of pale green in the sky up here now, that's starting to happen. Just through this area. It's hard to see in the camera, the camera never seems to pick it up, unfortunately. Now we look and we wait. We look and we wait. What do we go 
over there. Let's just uh, take that salt bush just off the edge here, shall we? So far it's just been the one knife. I'll probably go to a slightly smaller knife uh, when it gets into the light and shadow effect through here. But then again, I may not. I may stay with this one. Let's see if I can just stay with this one. All right, I'm gonna clean this area, getting ready for the color. The intense color is gonna come, hopefully. Hopefully that color will come. Pure white, pure magenta. Just going to pre mix a brew here in case I need it quickly. That's magenta, permanent magenta. White. Now I'm going to pre mix another colour right next to it. Here of cat orange and white. Now, quite often, I'll get those two like that sitting next to each other, like so, that and that. And sometimes, what happens is then, while I'm painting, I scoop a little bit of both with the knife. So, you've got both colours on the knife at once, and then when you rub it, you get that subtle colour variants, which is often fantastic. Well, if the sun's going to come up, it's going to happen very shortly. You know, it's funny, it's very silent. I'm miles from anywhere. And yet the Stewart Highway is off there a few K, quite a few K's away. But I can hear it. I can actually hear the hum of trucks going past every now and then. I think, what is that noise? I'm in the middle of nowhere. How come I can hear that? The noise just travels. It's unbelievable. All right, come on, sunrise. We're waiting. <laughs> is it going to happen today? I can see the sun is actually just piercing through. Just need a hint of it on the hills I'm about to paint. The great thing about painting the outback is quite often you get a predictable clear sky. Like you wake up in the morning and you know that it's going to be fairly clear so you can predict the colours like I was talking about. Morning and evening very much like that because it's a, a very arid clear environment. But then you get other days like this that test you, test you out a bit. Just when you think you got it all sussed, then you got to wait. But it's good for your observation skills. Yeah, that sun's actually just risen now, and yet there's nothing hitting the hills. I can see out here we've just got a bit of sunrise. So, let's just wait for some colour. Wait for some colour. Oh -ho. Now, I'm not painting over there, but I'm actually getting a tiny bit of colour hitting the blue ranges. So if I don't actually get it in my picture here, I can see what's out there and I can add that. That's the beauty of our uh, not just doing it from a photograph. You're not always painting exactly what is in the view. You're also sometimes using what's over here, what's over there, incorporating that into the picture. And that gives more of a feel of the whole area, the place itself. Yeah, magenta is kicking in, lovely. Right, come on. Yeah, I can see them. I'm gonna use those little beggars over there. If they're not gonna come out here, I'll use them. 
because I've got such a strong colour effect. I don't want to waste it by waiting for the sun to get too low, you know what I'm saying? So, too high, I mean. You need to go slightly. See, so this is where you've got to make slight alterations. You first anticipate and then you make an alteration. I just need it slightly more red in that. Magenta, that is. I'll go for a. Uh, got to keep the knife very clean when you're using these clean colours against the cold blues and whatever. A bit more magenta. Just lightly touching. With the knife like this, I'll take some paint back down. I'll stand back for a minute. sun has just risen now, so we're actually starting to get a little bit of light coming through. Which means I can, I'm going to mix a little bit of orange with that. I can actually see it hitting now, so I can make my alterations. Yep, she's coming, she's here. All right, let's do this. Very lightly touch. Stand yeah, back and have a look. Just mix a bit of blue and white, a bit of green. Blue. Okay, what's going on here? I'm gonna to have to let's just pull this through. Right now, magenta again. White, orange and white. It's a little bit bright, I'm trying to make it slightly more intense there. Taking some paint off to create shadow. Get some foliage going now. I'll mix some orange with some yellow ochre, etc. over here. Just lightly flick. See some of the foliage getting lit up around me. It's capturing like so. The thing about this light, I can see it's very fleeting. It'll be gone any second, so... A couple of branches just capturing the light there. Just out of the picture, just over here I'm using them because they're lit up. These ones are dying again. See, things are dying already. This is the problem when you're... Uh, <clears throat> working with fleeting moments. Pull the picture purposely out like so. Go for some white, some clean white, that's dirty white. Orange and yellow, half mix. Oops, that needs to be a bit more, a bit less white, a bit more colour. It's just a, it's 
got to get the tone right. Bear with me. Just lightly touching. Bits of light pulling through there beautifully. Very lightly touching with the knife. Okay, now balance the composition. She's falling a bit here, so what I'll do is I'll just put a few trees up here to balance it and hold it up. So that's it, the light's pretty much gone. That, that's how much light I got to play with today. She's not a lot. Okay, so what have we got? A bit more of this magenta and white. It's hard to say. See, in some ways, you might as well just leave it. It's a, it's a fleeting moment that I've captured. And like sometimes you can just wreck it. Like it's a very, very short fleeting moment. Like literally then, as you saw, the light was probably on those hills for what? I don't know, a couple of minutes over there for a couple more minutes that's all I got to work with but that's the thing about plain air painting that doesn't mean it's a bad thing, it can be a good thing just gonna smear that blue up there a bit just to hold the composition up couple of clouds coming in up here that I might just purposely pull the little beggars through like so. Alright, so that'll do. Uh, like I've said, it's a fleeting moment. Didn't have much time to actually put the paint on. I had a lot of time to stand around and talk, but not a lot of, uh, not a lot of actually sunlit time. That doesn't matter, I've got an effect. Now what I'll do is get the camera off and let you have a look. Now if you like the video and you want to see more, just remember to subscribe and also forward it on to your friends and give the thumbs up. No worries, thank you. Alright, so there's the subject in the painting. Now we'll just pan around to give you an idea of what's going on here. That's where the sun rose today, and that's that cloud bank that got in the way. Oh, and there's the campfire. Right, so, I've used the trailer to hopefully block the sun as I was painting, so I wasn't getting direct sunlight on my board, but that wasn't a problem anyway, because there was no sunlight. So there's my subject through there. You can see that cloud angling out like so. And as we said, the light did not hit very long on the hills. I got it for a second, and if anything it was actually more off to the other way, but I managed to use it. So you can see I've got it, I've purposely taken the painting off the edge there, oh, whoops, but I like doing that. You can see I've got some beautiful colours in the sky, down to the blue on the horizon, and then you can see through the hills itself, You've got the cool shadows that I was talking about, quite cool, slightly green maybe. And then those magentas and orange flecks as the sun licks on it. And just in the middle ground, some of that foliage was just getting the light for a few seconds. So I put that in. That's that middle ground foliage there. But a lot more of the colour was actually out this way today. Those ranges that you can see here, they're the ones that lit up really magenta and pink and they're the ones I was using for my feedback on what colour to use. You can see there's some nice colours in the sky though and uh, that's what I got to use. 
There you go, there's your basic overall effect, just a fleeting moment of uh, light. No worries, thank you. Just knocking up some more breakfast now. We've done it before, as you well know. But I get hungry every morning, so I'm going to do it again. Cup of flour. Now the difference I like to do to a lot of people is I like to put um, some milk powder in which is making it like a scone mix. It's about a quarter of a cup of milk powder. A quarter of a cup of milk powder. Just a pinch of salt to add a bit of flavour. Now I'll just mix that dry ingredient first. Doesn't take much, just a few swirls here and there. Now, like a scone mix, <clears throat> you use uh, two wads of butter. Well, instead of using butter, what I'm using is olive oil. So basically, I've got a scone mix, but instead of using milk, we're using milk powder. Instead of using butter, we're using olive oil. Just mix all that in. Once you get that uh, oil mixed in nicely, now we'll just add a bit of water. Okay, try and keep all that stuff out of the food. Grass and optional extras. Just add a bit of water, see how it goes here. Now I've got the oven on, I'm preheating the oven, but particularly getting the lid hot because this is going to cook quickly. I'll be cooking this in eight minutes. So I cook it fairly flat, self-raising flour, let it rise. I'm also using whole milk self-raising flour because I prefer, prefer whole meal myself. That's just my personal option. You can choose what you like, obviously. It's going to go a little bit more flour because she got a little bit wet then. Okay, so we're getting there. So pretty much got that mixed up. Now the next trick is to I'll just pour a bit of flour over the outside so it um, doesn't stick to my hands in a minute. The next trick, now that we've got the oven preheated to the side here, just going to drop a bit of oil in that. Grab the oil and a little bit of paper towel. You can usually tell how hot it is by the amount of what the oil does when you drop it in. That's not too hot, that's nice, that's just warm. You don't want the camp oven itself too hot. But you do want the lid quite hot. It's pretty hard to overheat the lid. Now that oven could go a tiny bit hotter, but that'll be fine for now. Okay. So, we'll just grab this. Just get a bit of flour on the hands. That way this little thing won't stick to me. Okay. I'll just drop that in. Flatten it down a little bit. Yeah, I've got a knife here like I do. I'm just putting a crisscross through the whole dough mixture. And what that does is it cooks and it makes it very easy to separate later on once it's all cooked. Okay, now let's get this lid, which is quite hot now. Bung that lid on. Okay. Clear a bit of space, we get some coals out here. Don't worry about that tin there. What I do is I cook them up 
when they're finished, dry them up and uh, then crush them and put them in the bin. Guys, I'll grab that. Bung that on the coals like so. Now the trick is to keep the lid, maintain the heat in the lid. Got a good hot lid. Throw a few coals on there. Right, so that's all good. While we're waiting for that, let's get the belly going. Get the wood back on the fire. Okay. Now that will take approximately eight minutes, depending on how hot the oven is and depending on how much moisture you got in the mix. I think that will be about the eight minute mark. All right, we'll call back in eight minutes. All right, well that's about eight minutes. Enough time to boil the billy. That's what we've got, eh? Always have somewhere to put your hot coals in your lid. Don't just bung them straight in the dirt. Or, you'll end up with all sorts of dramas. Okay, what do we got here? Oh, there we go, look at that. Now you can see why I've got the crisscross, he opens up and breaks on it. That is hot, that is perfect. Whew. Fantastic stuff. Now, unlike a box of chocolates, that is a little bit more predictable. I kind of knew what I was going to get and it worked out, which is great. Okay, but the proof is always in the flavour. Apricot jam. You can obviously throw whatever you like on it. Because it's like a scone mix, I like to just throw a bit of jam and then into it. Mm-hmm. Lost for words, that's great stuff. Doesn't get much better than this.